so speaking of race courses, um, we're really lucky to sail 200 days a year um, in a lot of different venues around the world. And it's really important that when we get out in the race course in each of these venues that we understand the ins and outs of all of them um, and how each different type of venue affects our sailing style. So um, just a couple of examples. Um, the top left was racing in Genoa, Italy last year um, with a shoreline on the right and then open water, a big open body of water on the left hand side. Um, so there was more wind closer to land. Um, for whatever reason, it was just always more wind. So we were racing to the right most of the regatta. Um, top right, we were sailing in um, Sydney Harbor where it was really offshore, puffy and shifty conditions. Um, super similar to lake sailing, um, really fun, my favorite type of sailing. Um, bottom left, uh, this was sailing in Palma de Mallorca last spring. Um, as you can see, there's a shoreline on the left-hand side um, of the race course, and then the right-hand side is pretty open water. Um, and in a southerly breeze, um, the left-hand side of the race course pays every single time. Um, and then on the bottom right, this is us sailing in Japan, where we had uh, a sea breeze day. Comes from the south, super open race course, oscillating shifts, um, and as you can see, a pretty decent sea state. So. You know, every day and every race, it's really important that we're able to quickly and accurately assess what's happening on the race course. So Steph just described, gave you specific beautiful photos of all these different race courses that we've been on, but it's like almost impossible to keep that straight and then know how to apply that to the next day. We do keep a lot of playbooks, you know, so we'll take notes on what type of trends we saw, what breeze directions were and, and so on and so forth. But you can't always have those notebooks out on the race course with you. And it's not always the same. So how do you take all of those observations you have when you get out, when you first get out to the race course and formulate a game plan from it? Um, and I also want to ad admit that there are a lot of days that, yeah, we sell on the same race course, but the same thing doesn't happen over and over, you know, even, unless it's a specific geographical trend. And so here's the system we use. We basically take all of our observations, we, you know, on the way out to the race course, we'll just throw adjectives out you know we'll just go back and forth okay what kind of day it is is it well it's pretty puffy okay it's pretty shifty well it's hot and cold okay well it's a, you know and, and we just start throwing out observations about what we're seeing what we think might happen and then you want to funnel that into we basically rate we divide the race course types down into two two types one on which we can expect some consistent feature and one type of race and a second kind of race course that we expect variability and change. And so you just want to be able to take all your observations and filter them into some meaningful conclusions that can then inform your decision making process. Um, you know, when you're when you're thinking about making a ton of decisions throughout the day, um, knowing that you can throw some things out the window really helps clarify it and helps streamline this process. So we break it down either into one type of race course that's either you can expect consistency. For example, if there's a geographic feature like Steph showed you that left-hand shore in Palma. Okay, we know this bridge direction, left-hand shore, that's a geographical feature that's going to be relatively reliable. Um, maybe sometimes there will be more pressure on one side or the other. Uh, some sea, sometimes the sea state will be different. Maybe you're sailing and, and half of the race course is more in a harbor and half is more in exposed open water and the waves are going to be really different from one side to another that's gonna be pretty consistent throughout the day. Um, and maybe the shifts are persistent. Maybe it's an actual rotation in the wind. Uh, that kind of a trend, you can generally get a good um, indication from the forecast. You know, if the forecast is high confidence that the wind is gonna go 90 degrees left between the hours of 11 and two, okay, that's something that you can probably to some degree rely on um, and, and might be a consistent factor in racing, right? Um, <clears throat> then the other type of race course, when you can expect variability, I think would be more more often than not the um, close to shore in the lake sailing with the random puff patterns, right? Are the puffs coming in random ways? Is it an oscillating breeze? Just a reminder, a persistent shift would be a shift that starts to go left and then continues to go further left and further left and further left, and further left throughout the day. An oscillating breeze is one that would go back and forth and back and forth. Now, there are two types of oscillating breezes. Sometimes it goes back and forth in a predictable pattern. And you can actually, I mean, some places you can set a clock to the oscillations. Um, 
And some people like to do that. Some very diligent homework doers stuff likes to do that. <laughs> um, and then in other places, you, it just, it's, there's no rhyme or reason, you know, and then you just have to say that, Hey, these are totally random. We don't know what's going to come. So are the oscillations, uh, in a, in a pattern, are there trends to it or are they totally random? And then if they're random, then, then that's the type of pattern they are random pattern, right? Okay. So if there's a lot of unknowns on the race course, then that's also uh, expecting a variability. So we've got these two kinds. Are we expecting something predictable and consistent and maybe reliable? Or are we expecting change? And is the only constant today going to be change? All right. So one powerful tool that we have to help us um, assess the day, usually after we're after a day of racing, but sometimes between races, we're able to access this um, is a GPS tracking from SAP analytics. Um, we'll go through just a few scenarios here that show um, course based versus um, you know, when you sail a course or when you sail the wind. Um, here we have an example from when we were racing in Japan last summer at the test event. Um, we had, we're, as you can see on the right, there's a, a Google Maps image of the, um, of the shoreline in Japan. And we, so we had shoreline on the left and then open water on the right. And as you can see from the tracks on the left, those, um, the boat that went to the left ley line continuously got lifted to the mark. Um, and those, those were the winning tracks from that day. Um, as we go into the next slide, Um, here's an example of, of a persistent left shift that we had that made for a really long port tack. Um, you can see boats spent more time on port tack than they did on starboard tack. Um, and this was a consistent trend that we saw throughout the day, um, but it made getting a really good lane on port tack um, a huge priority for the day. I think it was also in the forecast that day, right, Steph? Yeah. And, and so it was nice to have that forecast that came in with anything above confident or above average confidence level that said, look out for a left trend, you know, and then it's really great to start seeing that happen throughout the day. And it gives you a little more confidence to send it left. Yeah. And if we'd shown you the 10 tracks of the different legs, you would have seen more and more left, left, left that day. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, and this is an example. So if you can see the, the green boat went to the right, the purple boat sailed up the middle, the red and orange boats sailed up the left. And uh, did I say that right? Orange also went, up the middle then the top left anyhow point of this diagram is that the four boats at the top all came from different sides right and um they tacked some two times some one two three they're gonna tack four times um this is what we would call an open race course when you can go left right or middle and be in the top four that's an indication that hey this is an open race course and that's a data point that no we don't get these winning tracks diagrams on the race course in real time. Unfortunately, that would be pretty cool if we did, but we don't. Um, and so that it's a conversation that Steph and I have on board. Sometimes when it's not really clear that one side won over the other, we'll ask each other, uh, what paid, who came from where, what paid last? And if it's hard to keep track of, then we'll ask our coach between races. But that's just another example of um, a piece of information that, that you can gather and then learn more about as the course of the day goes on, you know? Did we think we thought left was going to pay? Did the left pay where the leaders come from? So, so this is an example of an open race course. All right. So something I'm really excited to share with you guys tonight is um, a really cool chart that we worked with Dave Ullman um, to develop. And um, we call it day typing and um, basically breaks the race course down into two race courses. Like we talked about the open race course um, and then somewhere to race to. Um, you can see we have, in an open race course, we have two different situations, um, a stable wind and an unstable wind. And then under um, somewhere to race to, we have four different um, features. And most of the time we're racing in an open race course. Um, and for you guys in lake sailing, you're, you're probably most of the time sailing an open race course with unstable and puffy and shifty conditions. Um, but it's a, it's a cool way for us to just kind of have these, these defaults and just, um, almost something to lean on to help you help us really make confident game plans. Um, actually for a while I had this chart um, laminated and carried it with me in my life jacket and just, just something cool to refer back to. And I, it's, again, it's pretty simple, but that's how we, how we like to run things. Yeah. And I'd also like to mention that with a tool like this, 
it's okay for the terminology you use to evolve over time. And, and we'll talk about that later too with some of our um, daily reminders. But um, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily suggest you adopt exactly this chart, but um, making something as simple as this, it, it is really helpful. And also just the act of making charts like this and deciding on terminology forces you and your teammates to, to talk about how you're thinking about these things and then make sure you're conceptualizing it in the same way. And I think so just the, you know, also the process of putting something like this together that works specifically for your team can be really helpful as well. So most of all, um, of the day typing, the, the chart that we were just looking at helps us remember what's gonna be important in terms of our sailing style for that day. So there are two big kinds of race courses, one in which there's somewhere to race to, like we can expect a persistent shift or there's a geographical feature, but something's gonna be consistent throughout this race, or it's an open race course and we're expecting oscillating breeze and random shifts, et cetera. So on the, when there's somewhere to race to, Oh, a good reminder would be that we're trying to minimize maneuvers so that we can get to a side. We're trying to get leverage. We want to get to the edge of a course, for example. Um, and so we might have to compromise on a lane, you know, if it's more important to really dig into that side as opposed to, um, you know, peeling off the hip of a pack. Uh, it's, and then you might have to be willing to compromise in order to get to that feature. Or it's also a nice reminder that, okay, say you do start and you don't have the best start in the world and you, you get pinched off the hip of a pack and they're all going left and you want to go left. Okay, if we have said we have to go left, we have to go left, then it's going to be a good reminder that that's going to be a clearing tack. We're going to tack and then we're looking to go back because we wanted to get to the left um, and, or vice versa going to the right. So your sailing style, you know, the number of maneuvers, what your objectives are in specific lanes and how much you're willing to compromise, that's all kind of your style for the day should be influenced by the type of race course you think you're sailing on. Um, and on the other hand, an open race course, um, if the shifts are unstable, like when we were talking about the persistent, I mean, sorry, the oscillating shift, if it's, uh, if it's um, unstable and it's frequently changing, sorry, I'm at the bottom bullet point, and it's frequently changing in a high tempo, you're gonna be tacking more often. You're gonna have to do with the, you know, sail with your gut, like Steph was talking about earlier, feel the ships as they happen and roll with it immediately. That's a pretty decisive way of sailing. You know, in those moments when you get you tack and you get an auto header and you or an auto tack and you have to tack immediately, you don't have time to talk it through with your crew. You don't have time to say, oh, what, what time are the race scores we're we trying to get to? No, it's like boom, boom, boom. You just gotta go with it, right? Um, so that sort of rolling with the punches, going with your gut, that's a high tempo, frequent changes. That would be pretty characteristic of an unstable race course on an open or an unstable day in an open race course. Um, if, it, if there's any stability, if there's any pattern in the oscillations of the wind, then you have to remind yourself, we're trying to sail in phase right now, right? And just pointing at the mark is what matters. Um, and so you might end up sailing up the middle of the race course, like that one diagram we showed you of people just staying in phase, but by being in phase, they ended up on different parts of the race course, but they still sailed shorter distance than everyone at the same time they were all at the top. So um, yeah, these are just some reminders for how identifying the type of race course influences your style of racing for that day. <laughs>